Right guys, Dan Hendrickson here. I am still in lockdown, but I thought what I would do is share with you a video which was pre-lockdown. I wanted to share with you a playing lesson that I've done with one of my journey students, uh, Dean. And Dean has been working with me throughout the winter and we've been out on the golf course. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go through the shots on the golf course, but I'm also gonna give you a little bit of a sort of a summary of each of those shots as we work our way through the golf course. Let's go and meet up with Dean on the first tee and uh, see how he gets on. Well, how far is 160 to you? Usually about a seven iron. Okay. Um, it's slightly downhill. Yep. So that's going to take probably it's about five, six yards downhill. So that's then moving into eight iron category, yep. isn't it? But the pin is right on the front here. Mm -hmm. And either side of that pin are two bunkers. So I want you to almost feel like you're throwing it a little bit Beyond. further. Yep. So I like that seven iron as a shout just to make sure you get past the pin on this one, leaving yourself an uphill putt back up the green. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Okay, shape is shot. What do you want to try and hit off this lie? Uh, again, I probably see a bit of a fade coming out of this one. Seeing a fade? Yeah. Okay. The feet don't feel one way over. Yeah, ball's slightly below your feet, isn't it, there? Pick your target. Really zone in on the swing, thoughts. well out very well out so for Dean what I was trying to get him to do on that first approach shot into the first green there was it kind of bottlenecks in and even though a time was probably the club for him by giving him that extra club and making him almost like throw it beyond the flag so it gives him a chance to putt back uphill he's just putting himself into a more higher percentage shot by going a little bit further past all the trouble which were the two bunkers either side of where the pin was going past there just gives him that little bit of extra wriggle room not a bad leave Dean no not, not too bad, bad leave. not too bad just a little bit of taking a drop out of this little area here because it's play prohibited at the moment but not a bad spot Okay, not a lot of green to work with. What club have you got? Uh, I've got my 58. 58 degrees, yeah. okay. All running down and away from you as well when it lands onto that green. So anywhere just past the pin is not a bad position to leave it, okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. So get yourself into the zone. And then uh, try and pick your spot of where you want it to land, okay? Very good, about there. Great shot, good Thank execute you. shot that. Lift yourself a nice uphill putt mate. So one thing you'll notice whenever you watch a lot of my short game um, videos or even on course lessons when I do them, is I'm always getting my players to try and think about a landing spot. It's like, it's like playing a game of squash or a game of racquetball. If you pick a spot of where you want it to land on the wall, and then you'll kind of done your homework from where the ball comes off the wall into the point of where you want to tuck it away. So in a chip shot, what I'm trying to do is get them to land it on that spot. And by that point, they will have done their homework as to where the ball is going to end up. For that shot that Dean hit there, ideally, I was trying to get him to get it just past the flag. So it left him a nice little uphill putt. Right, let's see if we can roll this one in, Dean, to keep, settle the old nerves down a little bit, shall we? Just off that right edge, I'm seeing this, Dean. Agreed. Agreed. Nice and positive uphill. Oh, oh. That'll settle the nerves, won't it? It helps. Hey? Yeah, we weren't it expecting helps. a half there, boys, were you, <laughs> after those two drives? Very good, well done. All right, 400 yards, this one. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Good drive away. That's what we need here. We a do. Good solid drive. So I want to see that nice little draw shot that you were hitting in the studio earlier today. Okay. I'll try okay. my best. Focus on the spot. Much better. A bit groundy. A bit groundy, but yeah. stuck. Yeah, much better flight though. Yeah. About 150 you've got. Roughly. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. That pin is tucked at the back shelf though, I think. You need to make sure you got it, because that's playing, obviously, the yardage is going to be uphill, so it's probably playing at least eight or nine yards uphill. Yeah. So closer to 160, pin at the back, probably pushing you now towards more like 165 to 170. Yeah. What's your club? Uh, six iron, I'm thinking. Yeah, six iron. Much wind up there, or is there it pretty is a steady? There is a of wind. A little puff there, isn't there? Yeah. 
Okay, and pin is tucked on the left hand side there, so what are you thinking on a, as in a shape point of view? Um, if anything, you obviously want to miss right, so a fade would be nice. So you're going to start it more at the flag, at the flag and let flag it drift and hope in it there? Away, yeah. What about the big tree that's there? Does that in your eye line at all? No, I would expect to hit the ball over there. Okay. I want you to think about the upslope here as well, though. Mm. Okay. So that ball is just sat on a slight upslope here. What's that going to tend to do to the ball flight? Uh, that'll make the ball pop up a bit. Do you think it will restrict any of any turn position with your hips? Yeah. You feeling that? Tendency off this lie is that it tends to get the ball to move a little bit from right to left. Okay. Um, so you're going to have to, if you're going to try and fade it, you're going to have to really fight yeah. against that. Okay. Yep. So um, again, pick your spot and commit to the shot. Okay. Yeah. So you've hit the shot and you started it on the flag, just drifting down to the right hand side now. It's just a good shot. I don't think it's made it all the way back there. No, just a tough shot. Perfectly hit. Good strike as well. So for that second shot up the hill for Dean there on the second hole, he had not really thought about the uphill playing a part as when you swing into a slope or upslope, especially like he's got there, your hips will, your lower half or your hips will start to really stall as you come into that shot. Therefore, what happens is the hips will slow down and the hands will take over. And that's where I was saying to him about him fighting against that one, that ball wanting to go kind of left on him. He played a fantastic shot to hold that off, but it was something that he hadn't thought about other than when I sort of mentioned it to him. Even when we, when he'd hit the shot and he sort of, we discussed it as we walked up the fairway, he was saying that he noticed it more because obviously I mentioned it. He noticed by the time he hit the shot, you could see that he almost bounced back off the slope and sort of fell backwards a little bit. And that's the type of thing that you've got to start thinking about when you're playing on slopes like at Torquay, which is quite a hilly golf course. Yours got back there. It did. It got that, no, I thought that was middle yeah. shelf, you know, but uh, just a really good shot. Did you feel that, that you had to fight against that slope a little bit? Massively, yeah. Did you? Yeah. Did you, yeah. you? Something you said that you weren't really noticing before you hit the shot or what, when we talked about it? No, uh, I lost my balance a bit. Maybe that didn't help either, but... Yeah. Um, it's something I've never really thought about. The slight upslope, yeah, and making your hips you. kind of slowing you down, and yeah, mm. and you again, if you're going to hit a fade shot off that lie, it's going to re you're going to really have to fight it. And you were saying that on the way out there that you felt that you had to fight it just to stop it from turning over yeah. on you. Yeah, good shot though. Pleased. Yeah. Okay, what's this ball doing? I think it's a little right to left. A little right to left. Come on then. It's pretty flat, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's flat there, and then it, but it does, it was trying to wiggle in from the Just right touch, side. Yeah. These greens aren't the quickest at the moment, the amount of moisture, so it's probably not going to turn quite no. as much. But no. again, good for pace. Yeah, please you can pick that up. Right, we've got a temporary hole here <coughs> because we've lost a little bit of the fairway due to the wet weather. So you've got 138 into that hole downhill. Lots of green down on the left hand side there. What are you thinking? Uh, nine iron, really, for nine me, I think. Yeah. Shape of shot, are you trying to draw it, fade it, hit it straight? Straight one. Straight at it? Yeah. Okay, and are you looking at that pin? I am, yeah. You it's are? Not... You're going to go pin seeking here? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just remember, anywhere right of that pin, you've got a downhill putt, and anywhere right of that green is basically dead and buried, all right? Yeah. So I, if I was caddying for you in this situation, I'd be saying to you, I want to get you more in the middle, in of, the the middle. middle of the green. So if okay. you could start it pretty much middle of the green and just let it see what it does from there. Okay. Okay, it'll leave you a nice uphill putt if you can get this right. Started it out to the right, is yeah. it coming back? No, it isn't though. No. So after that tee shot and just chatting with Dean as we walk down that fairway, what you have to be careful of when it comes to par threes that are quite short and you've only got wedges and nine irons in your hand, is not to go pin seeking every single one. Dean was zoned in on that flag on the right hand side there. And obviously by pushing the shot, he's left himself in a really, really awkward position. Sometimes it's good just to get it into the middle of the green and leave yourself a 10, 15 foot putt possibly uphill and walk away with your part. If you make a birdie, it's just a bonus. What are you trying to see here? Uh, I'm thinking obviously about the chip, but yep. I'm also then thinking about my putt. Okay. And I would rather go past the hole there because it's uphill coming back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what I don't want to do is fluff it and leave it short. I'd much rather go beyond. Okay, right. 
that's absolutely right and your your lie which is there which is which is okay but it's on a slight downslope isn't it so it's going to yeah. come out maybe a fraction lower than you would anticipate yep but I just want you to follow me over to this area over the other side of the green here just for a minute. Okay. Now I'm not saying you're going to end up over here, but I want you to be really mindful that behind this green is a bit of trouble. So yep. you can go from trouble over there to trouble over here pretty quickly, okay? Yep. So don't be afraid of trying to hit it to the right of that pin to a point because you're just trying to make a four now. You know, if you can get it onto the green in two part, the damage has been done off the tee. So if you give yourself in, over to the right hand side of this pin, you've got a lot more green and area to work with over there than you have over here being a bit, a little bit too aggressive. Yeah. Okay. So just take that, be mindful of that when you're playing these little shots. I know it shouldn't get away from you, but it can do yes. when you're landing on a bit of a downslope. Okay. Let's get back over to your shot. What club we got? Uh, again, I've got my 58. 58, yeah. yeah just trying to generate as much height as it can from here if you i would say you want to be aiming over towards where damo's bag is over on the far on the just left of the pin there yeah just to make sure you don't get a bit excited and run over the other side all right okay, and commit to the shot get it make sure you're landing it pin high if not past the pin and let it release down give yourself a couple of putts Done exactly what I said I didn't want to. Yeah, yeah. Didn't quite get that, did you? Oh. Up and down now required, Dean. All right. Just commit to the shot again. Just make sure you get it out of that position. It's a thickish, luscious lie. All right. So get it down there. Just pop it down. Well out. That's it. And that's really where the first shot needed to be kind of landing and then releasing yeah. down and leaving yourself yeah. a nice two putt up there. Okay. Yep. Yeah. No dramas. No. So just off the left side, the reed is probably just left edge. What a recovery. Easy. <laughs> what a recovery, eh? Yep, saves me again the putter. Well done, mate, very good. <laughs> so even though Dean managed to walk away there with a bogey, which ultimately the damage had been done from the tee, what I was trying to get the point across there was, once the damage is done, get yourself back into position, get yourself 10, 15, even 20 feet away from the pin, except that the damage has been done from the tee shot. What Dean couldn't quite get through his head and what a lot of people struggle with is that, hang on a minute, I'm just, what am I playing for, a bogey? No, I can get this up and down. And then on the back of that, what ended up happening is he ended up playing the shot a little bit too cute, leaving himself then another chip from that. Luckily, hold the putt coming up the, up the hill there, but ultimately, get yourself back into position, accept your bogey and walk away. Do not walk away with doubles and triples from nowhere. Right, we just had a discussion on that tee as to what <laughs> club you were gonna hit. So after a few uh, casual words, we've gone for driver. <laughs> we have, yes. Yeah. Right, 235, uphill. Now I'm always quite keen for you to be aggressive on this hole, okay? If you can pick up a shot here, great. But I think there's no real danger other than a few pop, like little bunkers around the green. It's definitely, this, this green is opening up for you to have a little pop at it. Yeah. All right, you can knock it up there. It's uphill slightly, so it's probably playing 245, maybe into yeah. wind 250. So I think with a decent drive, you can get it on. Get it so I there, want you yeah. to be a bit more confident in your, your feelings on this shot, all right? Pretty good drive in the end. I know it wasn't your best strike. No. But take the positives, you're right in the middle of the fairway. You're, this is a green light now. So you've only got what, 40, 50, or probably 50 yards to that pin? Yeah, a little pitch. Little pitch. If you can leave it just short right of this pin, it leaves you a perfect little uphill putt. Okay, anything past the pin or to the left will be downhill and then maybe swinging a little bit. So just make sure you can try and focus on just landing this about 45 yards and it should sort of skip up a couple of, couple of feet and then, um, and then stop on you with a decent okay. strike, all right? Yep. Slightly, slightly uphill all the way. Club your hand. And I've got a 54. Okay, 54. Really well played. Really well played. That was Please just a good that, shot, yeah. yeah. I think they've left that in a perfect spot there, Dean. Thank you. Just a nice little uphill putt from there. Really well played. Birdie time, Dean. Hopefully, that's it the plan. Birdie time. Yep. Right. Read anything out of that last putt that you just saw from Damo? It seemed to drift a little to the right. It, it, it did, didn't it? Just right yeah, at the just, end. Just a touch. Yeah. Okay. Um, just hopefully be positive. And, uh... It's just your length, isn't it, Dean? <laughs> I'm saying nothing. Saying nothing. Be positive. Birdie putt. Oh. Just your start position there, Dean. 
it was a good part, it was just your start position was a bit right. Now the it? big discussion that we were having on the tee there was that Dean wanted to lay up into a sort of 50, 60 yard shot. I didn't like that because I didn't want to see him in a position where he was kind of coming from a low point in the fairway to a high green. I wanted to see him either get a, you know, get it way up there, be aggressive, or lay way back. If he laid way back, that sort of put birdie out of the question really, percentage wise. I felt that on that particular hole he could be aggressive and he was aggressive. Ultimately he didn't pull off the tee shot but it put him into a position where he got it a little bit further up than what, probably what his hybrid would have got him. There are some times where you need to lay up but there's other times where you, if you can be aggressive you've got to push yourself forward. On that time I wanted to see him be a little bit more aggressive so he could then really set himself up for a good birdie. Right 145 pin tucked on the right hand side so do not go pin seeking here. No. Okay. So we've talked about it. We want to go middle of the green, yeah? We do, yeah. Middle of the green, and just if, it, if you end up moving it with your natural shape from left to right, and it falls down towards the hole, then ideal. But ultimately, just leave yourself in the middle of the green, give yourself that putt. Yep. What club have you got, Dean? I've got an eight iron. Eight iron? Yeah. Okay. Again, commit to your target. Okay, probably that lamp post in the background. Can you yeah. see it behind the, the street light there in the back, behind the green? That's your target. Again, really get zoned in on that target for us. Started at the flag and just drifting a yeah. bit right. That might just catch the right corner of the green there, Dean. You might actually end up with a nice uphill putt from there. It might be all right. Hopefully. Good strike though. Yes, yeah, better. It was strike a good strike. Told you you'd hit the um, right side, didn't I? You did. You've got a nice yes. uphill putt. However, you've got a little bit of a fluffy bit of grass behind the ball, haven't you? I have, yeah. Okay. What are you thinking? Uh, I've toyed with the idea of maybe trying to chip it or something like that, but I'm gonna go with a putter and maybe just pick it up a bit quicker behind, from behind the ball. Okay, let's try it. I'm gonna get you to play another shot after you've hit this one in a moment, all right? So you okay. just have a little go yeah. with this one to start us off with. Again, ball just gonna to wanna to move off that left side slightly as it works up the hill. This green again, looks like it's caught a little bit of wet. So it's gonna be a little bit slower than the previous green. Played it all right, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, not too. Can you just pop another really. ball down and yeah. just grab your new little hybrid that you've got there? Now I've got you to get the hybrid out because I just think that sometimes when you've got a collar of grass behind the ball, if you can use this hybrid like a putter, mm -hmm. it just enables you to again. You're going to treat it like a putter, but you're going to just lean slightly towards the actual um, target. So we're going to chip. Okay. Like, it's a bit like a chip shot, but as a putt. So set up with a weight just a little bit on the left side. Stand nice and tall on it like a putt. And then hopefully the back of that club shouldn't grab up in the collar quite as much as what, let's say, a putter would. Okay, how did yep. that feel? Quite easy, really. Yeah, I just think sometimes with a putter it can sort of snag up as you take yeah. the putter back. It's Obviously it's got that little bit of a ridge on the back of the putter, it can snag up there. Whereas at the back of that hybrid there, it just sort of goes over the grass a little bit easier. Yeah, cuts through it a bit better. Yeah, worth a little practice on that one, isn't it? Absolutely. I'd be interested to know what you think about using a hybrid from those sort of, just those delicate shots off the edge of the green. Now, when you've got a little bit of tough between the sort of where the ball is laying and then where the rough kind of starts on the fringe of the green, sometimes with the ridge of the putter, it can get a bit caught up in that sort of fluffy bit of rough. By having a hybrid, you haven't got this kind of ridge on the back. So what happens is it can it can kind of, as it rides up the back there, it can slide up the grass just that little bit easier and stop you kind of snagging into the grass as that putter goes back or that hybrid goes back. It's just a little shot that I think someone like Dean hasn't necessarily practiced or worked on, but it's certainly something that you need to get into your armory and can save you in lots of situations just off the edge of putting greens. All right, come on then. This for your par to finish. Just off the left half. Solid. Your putting's tidy, isn't it? Your it's putting is very shabby. tidy. Very good, mate. Well done. Up and down yep. the end there. You can see there with Dean as he finishes up the round, his putting is a very, very strong part of his game. He said he relies on his putting a lot for his game. I actually think Dean has come on leaps and bounds with his long game. We've kind of opened up a lot of things in his game. 
um, for him to be a little bit more aware of and he's been working on that over the winter. But for me, it was about a little bit of course management there. I think Dean can, like a lot of us, sort of chase a par a little bit too much and end up putting himself into a little bit more trouble. You know, if you look at some of the scorecards that Dean comes in with, he'll have some of the bigger numbers in there. He'll play some really solid golf and then bang, he'll chuck in a bit of a, a seven or an eight in his card, which can kind of ruin his scorecard a little bit. And I think that a lot of the time it's sometimes making a bad decision after maybe putting yourself in a bad spot after a bad swing. Sometimes it's nothing wrong with making a bogey and walking away with a bogey. It just saves you making those doubles and triples on the card. Let me know, put your comments down below. What did you think of that round of golf? It was just a little bit of fun. I think Dean finished about one over in the end, which wasn't too bad. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing. And as always, stay safe, and I look forward to seeing you soon.